So let's take a closer look at the analog to digital conversion process. Uh, in order to do that, I have represented uh, an analog signal, which as I mentioned is continuous in time and continuous in amplitude. Continuous in time simply means that uh, there is a value of the signal for every single point in time. And continuous in amplitude means that uh, there are no uh, abrupt changes in the value of the signal. Uh, the, the transition from one value to another is a, a smooth curve. And notice that uh, the signal varies in amplitude over time. I have represented on the y-axis uh, different points from 0 to 8. And I've labeled 8 as VFS, the full scale voltage. I'm just assuming that this analog signal can vary between 8 volts, uh, between 0 volts and 8 volts. So 8 volts could be my, my full scale voltage range. And then I want to convert this signal into a digital form, uh, which is basically a sequence of ones and zeros. And the first step in that process, once I have my analog signal, is that of sampling the signal. Now, sampling refers to uh, measuring the signal at periodic time intervals, which are known as the sampling times or the sampling instances. So let's imagine that I sample my analog signal as these um, particular instances at time equals uh, T0, T1, which I have labeled here. That will be the value of my analog signal. T2, this will be the value, T3, right there, and T4. And once I have sampled my signal, what I have is a discrete time signal. Uh, it's still continuous in amplitude, meaning it can take any value between 0 and 8 volts, but it is discrete in time because I only have information now of my signal at those particular sampling instances. So in essence, I have a sequence of values uh, for T0, T1, T2, T3, and T4. Uh, the next thing I need to digitize my signal, convert it into a digital signal. And in order to do that, um, I'm going to use a digital system, which has a number of available bits. Let's imagine that I have a three-bit system. And what that means is that I'm going to represent uh, every point, uh, every sample, with a three-bit binary word. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, divide my full-scale range into uh, 2 to the n, 2 to the n being the, the number of available bits, so in this case 2 to the 3, or 8 steps. And I've already done that because my full scale range is 8 volts, and so from 0 to 8 volts I've divided this into 8 steps, and now I'm going to um, provide a digital value associated with each one of those steps. So for between 0 and 1 I have uh, 0, 0, 0, 1 to 2, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. And so the next thing is I'm going to map every one of these values to the particular uh, digital word that I have just written down. So the first one will be 1, 0, 0. So 1, 0, 0 for my 3-bit system. That will be my first uh, digital word. To represent the first sample, uh, the second sample maps to 110. The third sample also maps to 110. So again, 110. Uh, next sample maps to 011. And the final sample maps to 0, 0, 001. And so this is my digital representation of this analog signal. If I am uh, representing it via uh, or in a, a 3 bit analog to digital converter. Now, notice again what I have at the end is a digital signal now. Um, but notice that there is a phenomenon uh, that is referred to as quantization. And quantization refers to the fact that um, I'm trying to represent a continuous variable uh, via a finite number of states, of digital states. And so what I end up with is that I have, um, a part in a particular range, so let's imagine, for example, uh, this particular range between 6 and 7 volts, 
Any value that my signal takes in between those two values is going to map to the same digital value 110. We can see that clearly into sample T1 and uh, T2. Uh, they both map to that 110, uh, but if you look at it closely, you'll notice that the value um, of the analog signal at time T1 is slightly larger than the value of the analog signal at time T2. So different values, but yet not different enough to be mapped to two different um, digital words. Uh, and so basically, this is the mapping that we have done. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is each one of these uh, sampling instances uh, is referred to as a digital word. So this will be a three bit digital word. Um, when typically we refer to the number of bits as n, so we will say that the n for the system n equals 3, um, or this is a 3-bit system. And each one of those individual um, uh, components of the digital world, those are referred to as the um, bits or binary digits. So each one of those, either a 1 or a 0, will be a binary digit or a bit, and a group of 3 in this case will comprise a binary word. So we've talked about uh, sampling as being the first step in the analog to digital conversion process. And so the question arises as to um, how fast do I need to sample my signal um, or how many samples do I need to take per second, let's say, so that I am eventually able to reconstruct my signal, meaning so that I am um, gathering all the information about the signal. And... Uh, that question is answered with the Nyquist-Shannon sampling theorem, sometimes also referred to as simply the Nyquist theorem or the sampling theorem. Um, and it basically tells us that in order to, um, to have all the information about my signal so that I am eventually able to reconstruct my analog signal, I need to sample at a frequency, a sampling frequency, which is at least twice the maximum frequency of my signal. Um, if I sample at any less than twice the maximum frequency of the signal, I run into a phenomenon known as aliasing. It's an undesirable effect uh, by which I introduce uh, false or alias frequencies in the process of sampling or reconstruction that were not present in the original signal. Um, and so the idea is if I sample at less than twice the maximum frequency for the signal, I will run into aliasing, so when I try to reconstruct my signal, I will see frequency components that were not in the original signal. And so to avoid aliasing, because any analog signal is likely to have a high frequency noise, the first step is to band limit the signal. And we do that via that uh, initial analog filter. I have represented here the first part of my um, digital signal processing system, which corresponds to the analog to digital conversion part. I notice uh, that the first step is to run it through an analog filter. And the idea behind that is that I'm trying to band limit my signal so that then I can sample at uh, typically twice the maximum frequency or, or sometimes even slightly, uh, slightly higher than that. Uh, and because of uh, the fact that that filter is there to avoid aliasing effects, sometimes it is referred to as an anti-aliasing filter. Now, um, another important thing to keep in mind, another important parameter that helps us understand the performance of an A to D converter is the ADC resolution. And the resolution typically uh, indicates the number of digital words that an analog value can be mapped to or the number of digital states that I have available. And so in the example of the three bits ADC system that we have just seen, my resolution M will be equal to uh, 2 to the number of bits, or in this case 2 to the 3, which will be 8 states. Sometimes you will see that people talk about 3-bit uh, resolution, as opposed to telling you 8, uh, resolution of 8, or 8 states. And uh, sometimes resolution can also be expressed as a percentage of full-scale range. And so in those cases it will be calculated as 1 uh, over 2 to the n, and being the number of bits available in my system. Uh, or in the example before, 1 over 2 to the 3, 12.5% uh, of the full scale range. So these are some of the um, uh, key concepts or ideas that help us understand the analog to digital conversion process.